So in this video, we'll see how to do custom error handling when using Redux Toolkit. So as you can see, I have created a simple Redux application using Redux Toolkit. And in the app.jsx, I'm just dispatching this particular function. So I'm calling this get post function. And here we are making API call to get a particular individual post. So when I click on this, you can see this is the API URL and we are making API call to this particular URL and we are getting title, body, ID and user. ID. And this is the application you can see initially loading is displayed and then we get that information of that particular post which is displayed here. So this is working. So as you know, whenever we are using await, we always need to use try catch. But here, as you can see, I have not used try catch. So if what will happen if the API fails, so let's say the URL is wrong. And if I check now, you can see you correctly get this error. So we are, our application is not breaking. So if you see here, we have this name not resolved and we are correctly able to display this error message. Why this happen? This is because for the create async function as a second argument, we need to pass a function which will return a promise. And when we declare a function as async, it will return a promise. So depending on state of that particular promise, whether it's pending, fulfilled or rejected, this particular code is getting executed. So when it's rejected, this code is executed and we are seeing error while we are setting this error message. And that error message we are accessing using use selector hook and we are accessing the post property. So if you see here for this particular reducer, we have post as the one of the property that we are accessing and we are displaying this title body and if there is error message we are displaying that error so this works so you don't need try catch when you are using create async by default it's handled by redux tool so if you go to redux you can see that so initially pending is sent and then in instantly rejected is sent so if the api url is correct then you will see pending and fulfilled and you get that data. But if the URL fails or the API call fails, your rejected action will be sent and you are able to see that error message. But let's say I want to send some custom message. So depending on the API is failed or depending on the uh, ID that we are passing, if the ID is not valid. So we need a different error message to be displayed. So how can we do that? So in this video, you will see that. So if you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. So you will get future video notifications. So now you can see now this works and we are getting error if the API is wrong. But if I want to display some custom error message, then you can use try catch here. So wrap that await code inside try catch and I can print this error. So if you see, now you can see initially you see that loading and there is no message displaying. And it's saying fulfilled, it's not rejected. Even though the API call is failed, you can see why this is happening. So whatever you return from this particular function will be sent as action.payload. So it's going as fulfilled because we are not sending anything. So if the API fails, catch will be executed and we are not returning anything here. So that's why it's failing. So if I want to return custom error message, you can use parameter. So this particular function automatically receive args and second is the thunk API. So if you are passing some arguments while calling this function, you can access through args and this thunk API contains extra information that you can use. So let me print that. You can see thunk contains your state information, you can use get state to get the current state. It has fulfilled with value dispatch function and it also has reject with value. We can use this reject with value to send specific error message. So here, if the API is failed, let's say this URL is wrong. So I'm getting 404 error. So I can check if risk error. So as we are using Axios, you will get error response in error dot response. So we can print this uh, before using, so you will see what it contains. We can see error.response is undefined right now because the, it's not issue with that particular ID, it's issue with the domain. So if I use some large ID, now you can see error.response. So I can print it here so it's more clear. 
So error dot, this is the response. And you can see response dot status 404. So depending on the status, we can display error, error message. So I can say if error dot response. So as we have seen, response error dot response might be undefined. So you cannot use error dot response dot status directly. So you can either add this condition or you can use optional chaining operator. So if dot error dot response exists, then only check for status. So if status is 404, then I need to return something. So I can throw an error here. Throw, or I can say thunk API dot reject with value. And I can say invalid post ID. And you make sure you are returning, not just calling this. So only when you return, whatever you return will be passed as action. So now here in rejected, I can take that action. And here I can say action dot payload. So whatever you return will come as a payload. And if there is no payload, then by default we'll display this error. So if I save, now you can see invalid post ID. We are successfully able to display different error message. So you can add extra conditions depending on the, if the server is down, so if it's in maintenance mode, so you can find out which are the status codes, HTTP statuses. So this is a nice website, which will tell you all the status code. So if the server is down, you can see service unavailable, 503. So if your server is on maintenance, so maintenance is going on. So you have 404, which we have already seen not found unauthorized. So depending on the request response error, you can display different error message. Or I can just return reject with value. And here, if that's not 404, I can just say error dot message. So every error has a message property. So all other errors, if there are, then they will be, message will be used and we'll get that here. So let me go back. You can see for this, we are getting invalid post ID. And if I make this post ID valid, and the URL is wrong. Now you can see you are getting network error because the API URL is wrong. And you are getting this error name not wrong. So we are correctly getting this error dot message. So as this URL is wrong, so this is the correct URL without S. Now you can see you are getting that message. But if I add S, the API URL is wrong, then you will get network error because it's going inside else and you are printing error dot message. So whatever you are returning from catch or whatever you are returning from this function will be sent as action dot payload and that we are using inside this. So that's how you can use custom error method. So as I said, you can accept extra parameters. So here while passing, I can add post ID, let's say two. So now this object you can accept here args and as this is object, you can just destructure post ID. And here I can use dollar of post ID because I'm using template table syntax. And now you can see network error because the API URL is wrong. Let me correct it. You can see you correctly get this post ID. So we are sending post of two, let's say 10. If I send 10, you can see you get different post ID. So that's how you can pass extra information. So one more thing you need to remember in the package.json, I am using Redux Toolkit version 1.9. So this is the older version. And if I search Redux.js Toolkit, NPM package, you can see the latest version is version 2.0. If I click on this, you can see 2.0 version. It's just released two months ago. So it's the latest version, but there is a breaking change. So now if I install this version 2.0.1, so let me install that and we'll first remove this npm uninstall at redux js slash toolkit so there will not be any reference of previous install and now here i will install at latest so when i say at latest it will check at the npm so the latest version is 2.0 so that will be installed so now the latest version is installed, you can see here. And if I start the application, 
let's access the URL. You can see the application is broken. We are getting this error. The object notation of create slice dot extra reducer has been removed. So in the latest version of 2.0, which is released two months ago, you can see 2.0.0 released two months ago. So, and this is the latest 2.0.1. 2 so it has a breaking change. So if you are using create async func, and then you will be using extra reducer. But this syntax is deprecated, it's remote. So for extra reducer, you cannot pass object anymore. You need to pass a function. So I'll make this function and it will receive automatically a builder parameter. And instead of returning an object with all these property, you need to call builder dot add case. And now this will be the case. And depending on that, you will execute this function. So now this is not the syntax you will be using. Here also builder dot add case. This will be the fulfilled case. You can see there is no bracket here. There is a bracket here in the previous version. So make sure you are not adding bracket, otherwise it will not work. I'll comment out this and again builder dot add case. Now here you can take this and I can comment out this. So if I save this, you can see it again works. So we don't have any error here. So I can keep this, I will keep this for your reference. So I will move all of these comments at one place. So we can see this now works correctly. And if there is any error, network error, this is working. And if the post ID is wrong, you can see invalid post ID. So depending on that, how you can display that error. So whenever you want to, this try catch is not required when you are using create async thunk because it's automatically handled. But if you want to send some different response depending on different error codes, then you can use this thunk API dot reject with value. So instead of calling thunk API all the time, you can destructure here also. So that's also an object. So I can directly say reject with API. So I don't need to call this. You can see. Thunk API, let me remove this. Now you can see it still works, invalid post ID. So if I make that post ID valid, let's say two, you can see you correctly get that data. So this is how you can do custom error handling when you are using Redux Toolkit. If you want to learn React from scratch with Redux Toolkit, React Router and all the other things which are related to React, check out the link in the description. And if you found this video useful, do like it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.